Hello, Amnesty International. Hello, Get Off the Bus. I am very excited to be here. This is my first time doing Get On the Bus with you. This is exciting to me. I hope you're speak to you today briefly about our Sri Lanka action, about the need for accountability for thousands of civilians who were killed and injured, for which no one's been held accountable. I'm looking for all of you to make some noise today on Sri Lanka. Are you willing to make some noise? Yeah! Are you willing to tell the United Nations that there has to be accountability in Sri Lanka? for the human rights abuses and the war crimes that happened during the war committed by both sides? Yes! Are you ready to tell the Sri Lankan government that impunity is over? Yes? yes. I'm going to talk briefly about Sri Lanka, about what the United Nations has done, and then finally about what Amnesty has been doing on this issue. Sri Lanka doesn't usually get much coverage in the U.S. press, so bear with me while I give you a brief background on the country. Sri Lanka is located on an island that's about 25 miles off the southeast tip of India, for those who don't know. It has a, a population of about 20 million. Three quarters of the population is, belongs to the Sinhalese ethnic group. It also has Tamil and Muslim minorities. Beginning in 1983, Tamil separatists fought to create an independent state on the island for the Tamil minority. The main Tamil armed group was the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Milan. The war started in 1983. It ended in May of 2009 with the government's victory over the Tigers. The war was brutal. Both sides, both the Tigers and the government, committed massive human rights abuses. The Sri Lankan government arbitrarily arrested anyone they thought was connected to the Tigers who supported them. Thousands of young Tamil men and some women were tortured and killed. Many were made to simply disappear. The Tigers, on their part, were also responsible for gross human rights abuses. They massacred Sinhalese and Muslim civilians. They also massacred Tamil civilians. They indiscriminately killed people through suicide bombing. They tortured and killed prisoners, and they forcibly recruited child soldiers. So another child soldiers. In the final months of the war in 2009, the fighting reached an intense phase. The Sri Lankan army conducted repeated offensives and gradually shrank and then overran the territory that the Tigers had been controlled. The Tigers had with them nearly 300,000 civilians, who they were holding as human shields. Repeated appeals by Amnesty and other members of the international community for humanitarian troops in order to let the civilians leave the war zone went unheeded by the Sri Lankan government. By the time the war ended in May 18th of 2009, thousands of civilians had been killed and many thousands more injured. The civilian casualties weren't accidental, or simply the result of being caught in crossfire. Many resulted from indiscriminate shelling by the government forces of the Tiger-Pal territory, which, as the territory shrank, was increasingly densely populated by civilians, as well as the remaining Tiger forces. The Sri Lankan government also prevented the International Committee of the Red Cross from uh, supplying food and medical assistance in the quantities that were needed, resulting in deaths from lack of proper medical care and from malnutrition. The Tigers, on their part, were keeping the civilians in that area to basically to serve as human shields. When civilians tried to flee across the government lines to the government side, the Tigers shot civilians trying to flee and killed them. They also forcibly kept recruiting people in the area that was still under their control up to the bitter end, including some child soldiers. All of these acts violated international human rights and humanitarian law. Some of them constitute war crimes. It's critical that those responsible for these atrocities be held to account. Failure to do so would send a message to the international community that it's possible for war criminals to escape justice and might encourage other countries to follow the Sri Lanka option. 
In the two years since the end of the war, what has happened to hold anyone to account? The Sri Lankan government has set up a reconciliation commission, which it holds out as the mechanism for accountability. This commission, however, is just the latest in the long line of commissions that the Sri Lankan government has set up over the years, every time they've gotten pressure on human rights. They set up a commission, the commission holds hearings, produces a report, which is given to the president and never made public, and no one has ever held accountable. This latest commission is simply the latest in this line of sham, to be blunt. There is no reason that the victims of these atrocities and their family and their relatives should wait for this latest reconciliation commission to fail to provide justice. We need an international investigation. We need the United Nations to conduct an independent international investigation. That is the focus of today's action. The UN, for its part, has set up an advisory panel. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon set up a three-member panel of experts last year to give him advice on how to pursue accountability in Sri Lanka. The panel is a good first step, but it is not the international investigation that's needed. What has Amnesty been doing on this issue? Since the war ended two years ago, Amnesty has been campaigning on this issue. We set up an action last year, on the first anniversary of the end of the war in May of 2010, with an online petition to Ban Ki-moon asking him to set up an international investigation. Some of you may have seen the online petition. Our target for that action was to get 50,000 signatures on that petition by the end of last year. We didn't get 50,000 signatures. We got over 53,000 signatures. <laughs> last February, a couple months ago, we took those. We took a printout of all those signatures and uh, paper copies of the petition with us to the United Nations. We, we delivered them to the UN and said, we and the international community were waiting. We were looking to the UN for justice. And if we didn't get justice, if we didn't get an international investigation, we would be back. Well, the United Nations in the last few months has not established an international investigation. So guess what? We're back. Your energy today and your chance and all your and all your energy. Really. We are going to let the world know that Amnesty International will not rest. We will not stop campaigning until the victims and their families get the truth and the justice they deserve. There will be an international investigation into these war crimes and abuses. Thank you.